Just about everything is made of plastic these days, and sooner or later that plastic is going to crack. So the question is, can you actually repair it using a plastic welder? Well, let's find out. Let's test the welders on three different types of plastic, HDPE, ABS, and polycarbonate. Finally, we'll see if JB Weld is actually better than a plastic welder. At a price of $22 is this RXXX Weld. I'll just call it the RX Weld. The plastic welding repair kit includes an 80-watt iron, 20 black rods, sandpaper, and stainless steel mesh. They claim it can be used to repair a car bumper, dashboard, kayak, canoe, or fuel tank. The RX Weld is made in China. And the RX Weld is advertised as producing 80 watts, and it did better than advertised at around 86 watts. Let's see how long it takes for the welder to warm up. And the RX Weld welder made to approximately 480 degrees Fahrenheit after 3 minutes. Minutes. At 5 minutes, it's all the way up to 642 degrees. And 10 minutes is up, and the RX Weld is very hot at 791 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's kick off our first test. I'll use an oscillating tool to make 8 cuts through the side of a water bucket that's made of HDPE. I'll sand the entire repair area with coarse grit sandpaper, and then I'll clean the plastic with rubbing alcohol. Preheat welder for 5 to 10 minutes before use. Apply welder tip to the end of the repair stick. Melt and spread the repair stick over the cracked and damaged area. The RX Weld welder does take longer than anticipated to melt the welding plastic sticks. After allowing the welder to warm up for 5 minutes, it took about 3 minutes to make the repair. Why not just use a hot glue gun? This hot glue gun by Roby only cost $23, but it did not come with a battery. The Roby is made in China, and hot glue melts at around 275 to 350 degrees. And the Roby hot glue gun is at 285 degrees after 3 minutes. And the Roby hot glue gun is at 342 degrees Fahrenheit at 5 minutes. And the hot glue gun is finally warmed up to 384 degrees after 10 minutes of warm up time. Hot glue adhesive might not stand up to water exposure for a long period of time, but this should offer a temporary repair. At a price of $37, is this all turn 100 watt plastic welder? It's a hot stapler kit. Fix car bumpers, dashboards, radiators, and more. You can make a repair that can withstand shock and twist. The Altern is made in China, and the Altern only has to heat up one staple and it'll make very quick work of it at 51 watts. After only 5 seconds, the staple is already at almost 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And it only took 10 seconds for the staple to reach over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And the staple reached a maximum temperature of 1,380 degrees Fahrenheit in about 30 seconds. While a staple isn't needed for this repair, let's do it anyway to see how well it works. And hot red staple had no problem melting its way into the side of the bucket. It took about 30 seconds to install and then allow the staple to cool. I'll go ahead and clip off the legs of the staple. I installed the welding attachment, and the welder heated up very quickly and is making pretty quick work of melting the plastic repair stick. It took about a minute and a half to make the repair. The repair definitely won't win a beauty pageant, but I think it will hold water. At a price of $60, is this June Jip plastic welding kit? The kit includes a plastic welding iron, two welding tips, 20 welding rods, one sandpaper, two stainless steel wire mesh, one wire brush, and one welder stand. The Junip is made in China, and the Junjip is very close to the same as the RX Weld at 87 watts. However, the Junjip does warm up a lot faster and is 200 degrees warmer than the RX Weld in 3 minutes at 680 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Junjip is at 953 degrees Fahrenheit after 5 minutes. And 10 minutes is up and the welder reached a maximum temperature of 1,126 degrees. The Junjip comes with a couple of different welding heads. I'll go ahead and use the one that allows the welding stick to be fed into the welding head. The June Jip has had 5 minutes to warm up. I really like being able to feed the welding stick into the welding head. It really helps. And the repair took just over a minute. Still not a beauty pageant winner, but it sure looks a lot better than the Altern. At a price of $134, is this OI Mary welding kit? It's designed for repairing all types of plastic, including plastic bumpers. The kit comes with 800 pieces of hot staples. It includes a hot staple unit, a cutter, a triangle electrode, and a power line. It includes five power levels. The OI Mary is made in China. Carefully insert desired staple into one of three possible positions. And the OI Mary made it to 108 watts very briefly before it dropped off. On the highest heat setting, the staple made it to 1,825 degrees Fahrenheit in only five seconds. Just like I did with the Altern, I'll go ahead and install a staple in the repair area. I set the welder to heat level 3, and the O'Mary is extremely fast at just under 6 seconds for the entire process of installing the staple. I've installed the welding head, and I'll go ahead and increase the welding heat setting to level 5. Since the O'Mary did not come with welding sticks, I'll go ahead and use some that I purchased for the review. Just like there is with welding metal, there's a little bit of a learning curve with welding plastic. Once again, not the most beautiful weld, but I think it's good enough to allow the water bucket to hold water. At a price of $190, is made by Beyond Life. The Beyond Life is a 1600 watt plastic welder. The plastic welder heat gun will produce a jet hot air to soften parts to be joined. Also includes plastic filler rod. The Beyond Life is made in China. 
Press the power switch. Adjust the temperature control knob to the desired position. And the Beyond Life advertises 1600 watts, but the unit I'm testing is at less than 900 watts. However, at three minutes, the temperature is already at 770 degrees. At five minutes, the temperature is at 890 degrees and it's still increasing. And the welder reached a maximum temperature of 932 degrees after just under eight minutes. And the Beyond Life has had three minutes to warm up. I'll use the welding head that allows plastic sticks to be fed into the head. Compared to the other brands, the Beyond Life seems more difficult to use. The hot air coming from the welder quickly melts the bucket. So I'm attempting to melt the plastic welding rod while keeping the welding head pointed up and away from the bucket. Unfortunately, I still managed to melt a small hole in the bucket. Definitely the ugliest of all the welds and hopefully it'll hold water. So why bother with a plastic welder when you can just use some JB Weld Plastic Bonder for a price of just $8. Includes 0.85 fluid ounces or 25 milliliters. JB Weld claims that their plastic bonder works on thermoset and carbon fiber composites, thermoplastics, and coated metals and concrete. The strength is 3,770 PSI. Set time in 15 minutes and you can sand it in 30 minutes. The JB Weld is made in USA. After removing replaceable cap, press down on plunger and squeeze equal amounts onto disposable surface and mix thoroughly. Apply with appropriate tools in an even coat. And the JB Plastic Weld has a pretty low viscosity. I find that a more pasty consistency is a little bit easier to work with. Let's compare the Plastic Bonder against the JB Weld Original. I bought the industrial size of 10 ounces for $18. Sets in 4 to 6 hours and cures in 15 to 24 hours. Just like Plastic Bonder, the JB Weld Original claims to work on plastic and PVC. The JB Weld is made in USA. Apply with appropriate hand tool and an even coat. Squeeze equal parts of each tube onto disposable surface and mix thoroughly. And the JB Weld Original forms more of a paste and is very easy to work with. For applications on a vertical surface, a paste has a huge advantage. Since the JB Weld takes 24 hours to cure, we'll check back on this later in the video and see if the bucket will hold water. I cleaned all the plastic parts with rubbing alcohol and sanded all the parts with 120 grit sandpaper. Let's start the testing with HDPE since it has the lowest melting point at around 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we'll move on to ABS and polycarbonate. It's a very common plastic that's used in patio furniture, drainage pipe, trash and recycling bins, car parts, and even plastic lumber. The RX Weld had 10 minutes to heat up. Even with such a long warm-up period, the RX Weld is struggling to maintain enough heat to melt the plastic welding stick. And the total time to make the repair is around 5 minutes. I built this next tester to measure the failure load of each of the repaired test pieces. The rollers on each side of the tester spin freely, and the plunger in the middle will press downward until the test pieces fail. To serve as our control, let's we'll start off with an undamaged test piece. And the HDPE test piece is a quarter inch thick and just over an inch wide. And it takes right at 65.2 pounds to fold the test piece. All the repaired test pieces have had 12 hours since the repairs have been made, and the JB Weld test pieces have had 36 hours to cure. So let's test both of the RX Weld test pieces. And the RX Weld test piece that was repaired with only plastic weld broke at 15.6 pounds. I'll go ahead and repeat the same repair, but this time I'll add some wire mesh. The wire mesh should provide a pretty big structural advantage as long as the plastic is becoming hot enough to make good penetration into the test pieces. And the total repair time is around 10 minutes, and I'm not sure that the test pieces became hot enough to bond with the melted plastic in the wire mesh. And the wire mesh really helped the test pieces repaired by the RX welder. 46.47 pounds are about three times as strong as a test piece without the wire mesh. One thing for sure is that the hot glue gun is definitely a lot easier to work with compared to the welders. I'll use wire mesh in the test piece to give the hot glue gun the best chance to perform well. And the total repair time is very quick at less than a minute. And hot glue with the wire mesh repair did a great job of adhering to the HDPE. 54.24 pounds to move into first place ahead of the RX welder. I'll go ahead and install four staples using the Altern. And the Altern installed all four staples in about a total of 40 seconds. I'll go ahead and clip off the staple legs using the cutters. While I didn't show the entire repair, I did weld some plastic over the staples to add strength to the test piece, and the all turn folded at 25.6 pounds. Since it's still in one piece, let's test the strength going in the other direction. And the other side of the repair is even stronger at 34.3 pounds. So the staples are offering a lot of residual strength even after the original damage. Let's go and repair a second piece and this time I'll melt some plastic over the repair area. And the all turn seems to be making a lot more heat compared to the RX weld and it took about a minute to melt the plastic over the mesh. And the wire mesh did help the strength of the repair just a little at 32 pounds. Testing the opposite side of the repair once again, the repair once again performed a little bit better, this time at 36.4 pounds. And the June Jip and the RX Weld may look a lot alike, but the June Jip makes a lot more heat. And the plastic weld stick is becoming a lot hotter and seems to be more liquefied compared to the RX Weld. Compared to the RX Weld repair, the June Jip definitely looks a lot better. And the high heat from the June Jip really helped with a very strong repair. And 61.9 pounds is almost as strong as the undamaged test piece. I'll go ahead and make a second repair, and this time I'll use the wire mesh. Once again, the June Jip seems far more efficient at melting the plastic welding rods and keeping the repair area adequately hot. From just looking at the repair area, it seems to have pretty good penetration and looks pretty strong.
Unfortunately, adding the wire mesh to the repair didn't help the June Jeep. 48.36 pounds is still pretty good. And the O'Mary makes very quick work of heating up the staples. The first test piece will be without the wire mesh. And the O'Mary is making very quick work of melting the plastic welding rods. And the O'Mary repair held up really well, making it to 53.3 pounds, which is good enough to move into second place behind the June Jeep. Testing the opposite side of the repair, the O'Mary repair still offered decent strength at just over 22 pounds. And this plastic welder also makes plenty of heat to keep the plastic hot enough to embed the wire mesh. And the wire mesh really added a lot of strength to the O'Mary weld repair. 61.8 pounds is the strongest of the repairs made with wire mesh. Testing the opposite side of the repair, just over 38 pounds is still pretty strong. And the Beyond Life did not come with a clear set of instructions, and I'm not doing a very good job of making the repair. However, it does claim that it is designed to repair many types of plastic, including car bumpers, water tanks, swimming pool linings, and more. I made a repair with wire mesh and one without, and a test piece without wire mesh gave up at just over 24 pounds. Unfortunately, the weld didn't do a good job of sticking to the HDPE, and the wire mesh really helped add a lot of strength to the Beyond Life welder's repair. 48.1 pounds are twice as much as the plastic only repair. It'll be very interesting to see how much of a strength difference there is with and without the wire mesh. The plastic bonder has a very low viscosity and it isn't helping much with holding the wire mesh in position. After 36 hours of cure time, the JP Plastic Bonder without the wire mesh broke at only 1.1 pounds. And the wire mesh really helped the JB Weld Plastic Bonder. Just over 30 pounds is a huge improvement, but far less than most of the plastic welders. And the Plastic Bonder really struggled to form a good bond with the HDPE test piece. And the JB Weld Original forms a paste and that makes it very easy to work with. It did a great job of holding the wire mesh in position. And the JB Weld Original without the wire mesh performed a lot better than the Plastic Bonder at 13.8 pounds. And the JB Weld Original repaired with the wire mesh held up a lot better at 53.8 pounds. So taking into account just the strongest of the two repairs with or without the wire mesh, the June Jeep came out on top at 61.9 pounds. O'Mary performed almost as well at 61.8. Compared to HDPE, ABS plastic does take a little bit more heat at around 390 degrees Fahrenheit. And ABS plastic is used to make gardening tools, car parts such as dashboards, and pipes. I used wire mesh to repair the ABS test pieces. The repairs I made with JB Weld took place 24 hours before the plastic welders and I didn't use wire mesh. Let's go ahead and test the strength of the undamaged ABS plastic test piece. And the scale is overloaded at 90 pounds, so go ahead and change out the scale with one that can handle a lot more force. And the quarter inch ABS is a lot stronger than the HDPE at 132 pounds. And the RX Weld welder really struggled to make enough heat to form a strong bond with the ABS plastic. 19 pounds and the wire mesh broke free from the test piece. And the Roby hot glue gun lays down a very thick adhesive layer and that really helped. 64 pounds is the best yet. Just like the RX Weld, the Altern really struggled to gain a good grip on the ABS. However, 37 pounds is about twice as much force as the RX Weld. And the June Jeep welder makes a lot more heat and that really helps with weld penetration. 68 pounds is good enough to move into first place over the Roby. And the Yomeri really benefited from four staples along with the wire mesh. 76 pounds is good enough to move into first place ahead of the June Jeep welder. I'm pretty confident that the Beyond Life welder is capable of performing better, but not in the hands of an unskilled welder like myself at 26 pounds. I made the repairs using JB Weld products 24 hours before making the repairs with the plastic welders, and I didn't use wire mesh. Even without the wire mesh, the JB Weld plastic bonder still performed well at 30 pounds. Just like the plastic bonder, the JB Weld original did a fantastic job of bonding with the ABS. And 85 pounds is good enough to move into first place ahead of the O'Mary. So JB Weld without wire mesh came out on top at 85 pounds. O'Mary finished in second at 76 in the June Jeep 68 pounds. Polycarbonate takes a lot of heat to melt at around 550 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. It's used to make plastic eye lenses, safety glasses, headlight covers, phone and computer cases, luggage and more. Let's first test the undamaged polycarbonate test piece. And the polycarbonate is the strongest yet at 142 pounds or 10 pounds more than the ABS. And the RX weld with the wire mesh made it to 46 pounds. And the RX weld really struggled to gain a good grip on the polycarbonate. And the Roby hot glue gun leaves a very thick layer of glue which really helps a lot with strength. And it's 65 pounds before the weld finally broke. And the Altern with the help of staples performed very well at 57 pounds. Even after the plastic repair and mesh tore away, the staples are still holding. And the June Jip makes a lot of heat but all the extra heat didn't help. And the June Jip weld broke at 5 pounds. Just like the June Jip, the O'Mary makes a lot of heat. Fortunately, the staples really help keep the repair piece together at 39 pounds. And I really struggled to do a good job with the Beyond Life welder. And the weld broke at 32 pounds. And the plastic bonder is a very hard and brittle repair epoxy and it works very well with hard plastic like polycarbonate. Even without the help of the wire mesh, the weld gave up at 38 pounds. And the JB Weld Original continues to outperform the JB Weld Plastic Bonder. And the JB Weld Original gave up at 40 pounds or two pounds better than the plastic bonder. So the Ryobi hot glue repair came in on top at 65 pounds and the Altern finished in second at 57. So let's see if the plastic bucket holds water after the repairs. Unfortunately, there's a pretty good stream coming out with the Altern, but that's 
that's definitely my fault for missing a spot. There's also a very small leak with the RX Weld. However, after one more effort, I'm sure that both of these leaks could be fixed. I had a lot of fun testing plastic welders, and I really like the welders that put in hot staples, especially the O'Mary brand. However, if I was looking for the other style of welder, just a hot iron, I really like the June Jip. It makes a lot of heat. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.